those, um, telling them uh, of our new situation. We decided an organizational chart needed to be put together for the council. Uh, we need um, a list of authorized contacts for the Little Shell Tribe. Leona asked about the ICE money. Um, we didn't have any information on that at the time, uh, but that we were going to be putting in for it, and I think Gerald took care of that. Um, tribal letterhead was uh, done. Business cards for the council were ordered, and those have been received. Uh, federal recognition correspondence uh, will be handled by John, Gerald, and Troy. Uh, James may be assisting with this as well. Uh, we talked about having area reps, um, having volunteers from areas turn in names to the council and that uh, the council will approve area reps. And that we needed to look for an office. We have a building here, uh, however, um, the building that uh, we have here in Great Falls is a good portion of it is rented out to two renters, uh, an apartment upstairs and an office in the front. Right now we are working on the office in the back which does not have a bathroom uh, to it and uh, so um, we're going to be looking for some other type of building that we can uh, possibly own or rent. Then we're going to be looking into um, I hope this isn't the tobacco because <laughs> tobacco <laughs> grant, mo grant money for the tobacco um, <laughs> uh, to get uh, and get somebody to run this program for the Little Shell Tribe. We've been talking about that, um, and uh, we need to read contract to see how to handle the money. Uh, okay. Gerald will talk to Bethany at the Montana Wyoming Leaders Council office to see if they can pay the funds to the Little Shell Tribe. An ID machine, our old one was not usable. We ordered a new ID machine um, and we have that. Plus then we also had to purchase a new laptop computer that would um, <coughs> be able to run the machine. So uh, we've got that as well. Um, we, because we have many requests for um, replacement IDs or new IDs for people, so um, I don't know what we're going to be, when we're going to be starting. <coughs> Enrollment criteria, memo will be written by Troy and um, in line with our constitution to be posted for all members to see. Um, checking account, uh, Wells Fargo, um, there was a question on whether to move it to Stockton Bank. Um, we were talking about waiting till we get our 501c3. However, um, we don't have that quite yet, but what we have done, just so you guys know, is that the uh, account at Wells Fargo has been closed and a new account is opened at US Bank. Um, James will be our government affairs coordinator and we'll be a contact with government entities for the tribe. Department of Interior, um, Dell, see if we can get some help with our federal recognition. Um, Troy will look into this as the Little Shell Tribe's general counsel. We need a big push for recognition before the elections. Uh, look into getting a state bill to not only recognize the Little Shell Tribe, but also to get funding like the rest of the tribe. A democratic function at the College of Great Falls on Thursday, and we should have someone um, on the council attend there. John Clancy and Albina should go if they could. Constitution update, tribal court system, we should have a draft for the next quarterly meeting. Troy is working on that. Priority list, one is federal recognition, two, tribal court system and constitution update, and three is ID cards. Number four is state money for the Little Shell operating expenses. Uh, next quarterly meeting was set for the 7th of April, 2012. However, that was the day before Easter, which is what brought us here today. Um, and that the council would have work meetings the third Saturday of each month at 10 a.m. Troy and Donna, we discussed how to pay them um, 
we wanted to look at giving them $500 a month. NARF, representation of Little Shell Tribe by Troy as our general counsel for protection of the Little Shell Tribes in the best interest. Um, we'll send a letter to NARF. Ask NARF to come to our next council meeting and give an update on the Pabina uh, settlement to the council. We talked about the Red River cart, the repair of it. Um, Al Wiseman said he could fix it. And Tiki's holes are at Richard's and are all taken care of. Thank you, Betty. Any alterations, any corrections to the minutes? last meeting. Do we have an eye to accept the minutes? Aye. Aye. All okay. We have uh, take a vote on to accept the minutes. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as read? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, let us show that the minutes have passed. Uh, before I go any further on it, are there any questions from the uh, Members, about what was read to there, any questions on uh, the information that was put out? Okay. Yeah. Is that going to be put on the uh, website, stuff like that, for everybody to read it? Copy the minutes? This was put on the website, wasn't it? No. No, not yet. Not yet. Gerald says not I mean, yet. will it? Yeah. Oh, okay. definitely. Yeah. yeah. And you can email them out too. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so uh, at this point in time, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, Betty was going to give us a uh, treasurer's report, and now I'll, I'll help Betty out on that one a little bit. We don't really have a treasurer's report because what's taking place is. Uh, we're very lucky, I would say, at this point in time to have Colleen Hill from Hill and Associates. Would you stand up, please, Paul? Uh, uh, has graciously uh, volunteered to do our bookkeeping for us with her 25 years of experience. We jumped on that immediately because of the past situation that Mr. Sinclair had put our financials in and controlled all the checkbooks and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in this point in time, we also thought it would give Betty a little bit more time to go ahead and pay attention at the meetings, take the minutes down, and uh, and uh, so we can be more efficient. Thank you, Coley. So at this point in time, the two of them are put in this And between Betty and Coley, they're putting their heads together, then we'll find out, uh, we'll get a regular uh, accounting report. And I have to say, Colleen has already set up some accounting practices that are absolutely marvelous. I mean, uh, uh, she made it clear to us that she's she means business. Don't want to know where everything's at, uh, what's being spent. That we are going to go through and do it properly, where these things will be submitted to council for approval before checks will be signed. We have two check signers on the system, and as Betty uh, has uh, related, uh, it was kind of our suggestion to go ahead and and divers herself completely away from anything that Sinclair has done. I did not want to stay at Sto uh, Stockman's Bank. I just want, I wanted to get into the Wells U.S. Bank completely away. Uh, I would, okay. Wells, Fargo. Wells Fargo Bank, excuse me. So we have our account going there. Uh, Coley's getting that all set up, and that's that was here set up here in Great Falls. We thought it would be a little better having it right here in Great Falls. And so the only thing we need to do now is wait for somebody to put millions in it. <laughs> Have I forgot anything there, Betty? Do you want to? Uh... Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I did talk with Colleen, and she said that we have about thirty-five hundred dollars right now, but um, we do have a lot of monthly expenses that go along with the ownership of the building, um, and so you know, thirty-five hundred dollars is not very much money. It's not going to go very far. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Betty. Uh, did you want to make any comments, uh, Colleen, at all? Or? Okay. Well, once again, I'm, uh, I think we're very fortunate to have somebody with her expertise taking care of her books. I'm very pleased. And volunteering. And volunteering at this point in time. Uh, I said that loud, too. Do you hear that, Colleen? <laughs> 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 uh, 
All right. Well, we'll get into uh, anything else you want to add to that, Betty? Okay. We'll move on. Any questions? Uh, committee reports, enrollment. And I think uh, before we get into a little bit of that, that's Gerald and Luella. And uh, from, just for my own uh, gratitude, I'd like to thank uh, Gerald and Luella. Luella has put a lot of time in down there. She's pretty faithful. Uh, taking and answering the phones. We've had Daryl's helped out. We've had Pat Mackey been down there. Carolyn Fleur has been down there. We've had uh, Elvina's been down there spending a lot of time and it's all been volunteers. So I thank you all for the time you've put in there to help us out. Appreciate it. That's all we can do. We're just doing the best that we can with what we have, you know. And Gerald's been working real close with the ladies, so I think he's been doing a very good job. Uh, I haven't had any complaints on him yet anyway, so. <laughs> so, uh, Gerald, well, uh, Gerald, I'll let you take over. Yeah, okay, I'll stand up. I don't want to get beat up by him, so I've got a little <laughs> toe to the line. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, uh, I'll just, you know, give him a little short update here on the enrollment. Right now, we got finally got all the files, enrollment files, um, from Haver and from the storage, the two storage buildings we have. They're all down at the office. The ladies got everything in order. Um, Alphabetically, right, Luella? Yes. Yeah, well, everything's ready to go. I believe we are ready to start enrolling. I think they have um, 28, Eight. at least 28 right now that in the next few days, our week, we could uh, actually have some people enroll again and start that process, which has been, uh, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Um, so what we did do, too, is we did uh, purchase two laptops, um, the computers that were down there were so old. I mean, we're, they're operating on like Windows 98. So we purchased two laptops. One Daryl uses for the um, uh, Indian Child Welfare cases for enrollment and for IDs. And then the Wellas is also for the enrollment stuff. So we do have those. Um, we did purchase a new ID machine. That is, what, any day now we could start doing those. But uh, Daryl runs that. She's been real busy with the Indian Child Welfare uh, cases that have been, or requests that have been coming in. So she's been on top of that too. Um, you know, once again, just like to say, thank Daryl, Luella, Caroline, and Pat Mackey for for going down there almost every day and trudging through all those filing cabinets. I mean, there was a lot of them, and it took a lot of time, you know, to be volunteers and doing that. Um, other than that. Uh, well, Daryl, do you guys have anything on that? Or? Well, I think you mentioned that we did get $300 back. Oh, yeah, on those laptops. On the laptops. Yeah, they were uh, rebates from right. the staples, so and we'll use those to buy coffee now. Uh, Gerald, you you? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would, would you tell maybe just a little bit more about that ID card, how slick it is? Uh, it's a whole different. Yeah, it's, it's different than what, what everyone I'm sure here has. It's not a paper thing, it's just like a driver's license. And um, so they're going to last. I mean, if they get wet, they're not going to be ruined. Um, I think the only way you'll be able to ruin them is if you cut them up, start burning. So, yeah, they're really nice. Um, I think it, it'll be, uh, they're well needed because of the ones that I think everyone's carrying around. I've, I think I've put scotch tape on mine, you know, a hundred times just to keep it <laughs> at least in some kind of fashion or shape. Other than that, is that any questions? Or? Uh, I, I think we need an extension phone put in the enrollment uh, because the majority of the phone calls that come in are for enrollment. And we're continually running back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so that would, would help a lot. Okay. The one thing with, we will discuss, we're still discussing like earlier whether, you know, because you guys don't have a bathroom. <laughs> so we need yeah. to find a place that mm -hmm. at least, a new office where at least you can uh, have a bathroom instead of her run around the front all the time and, you know. Or the park. Or a porta potty. Well, I got a cold in the winter. Well, I got a uh, no, honey bucket no, no, no. in my boat. Well, somebody well, suggested a five gallon bucket. I was going to say, now that it's nice, you can just run outside. <laughs> the lilac should have bloomed by now, right? There isn't enough bushes. I just out wanted there. to mention the Indian child welfare. Go ahead. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of the Indian Child Welfare Act, but it is to protect the Indian children and uh, 
to provide someone to go to court with them and to represent them. They help families stay together. Um, most of the requests that I've had recently are children that have been taken away from their parents and are placed in foster homes. And 90% of the time it's because of uh, drug and alcohol abuse. I get an awful lot of requests from Washington. Uh, we have a lot of people in Washington, so there's um, numerous uh, different counties that send requests wanting to know if people are enrolled with us and if there's any help available to them. So once we get some federal recognition, maybe we'll be able to help them more than just send out a letter and say, yeah, you're enrolled or not enrolled. Um, the other day, uh, my friend Alvina <laughs> was digging through boxes and she found three years worth of Indian child welfare requests for information that have never been opened. So now what we're going to have to do is write to each one of these agencies and give them our updated information with a, an enormous apology for not following through on that. Um, I believe uh, when Carlene was working on that, she did try uh, to do some, but without the enrollment files, it's pretty difficult to do because you have a child that's maybe three or four generations back from a little shell member. It, it's a, quite a bit of research involved in each one of those uh, requests. And um, I appreciate all the help that Gerald has given us and the council for providing us with the equipment to do our job. Thank you. Well, the question is on the enrollment. Is there going to be a, a date that the new machine will be brought out as like to a party or to a powwow or something that we're going to be having so that the availability is there so that we want to upgrade from the old car to the system? Yeah, that's I, a I think very that's good a good success. request. We yeah. talked about that day before yesterday, and we do plan on doing that. Thank you for bringing that up. We used to do that at all of our quarterly meetings. And the very first one we did, we had over 100 people. So uh, I, I think that will bring people to the meetings also. Yeah, it'd be a good way to update and a card update if you have cards. one. But you can't, I mean, if any new IDs would have to be, you know. Yeah, the new ones would have to be researched That's good again. Idea. Yeah. But to redo, to redo a, an yep. old one, you just show it, then yep. you can transfer it over. Yeah, there would still be a fee involved, you know, to help pay for the equipment. Sure. A, a $10 fee, but yeah. as long as you already I'm have a card, it would just be a massive yeah. <coughs> Putting it in the computer. Except for right now. Then you'd have to do update. And if everybody can do for a new one, then you'd have to update. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for that suggestion. Appreciate it. Did, did you have a question, too, or no? Did you have a question? No. All right. Thank you, Vice Chairman Bill Gray. Thank you. So once again, thank you, ladies, for helping so much. Also, uh, thank you, Mr. Richard Pronto. Uh, it's a good thing he's got a strong back because his, him and his son-in-law is the one that loaded all them heavy files up. Some of those things weigh 300 pounds. But uh, thank you, Richard Pronto, <coughs> for taking care of that for us. We had two buildings that were uh, storage units up there that were rented, and uh, Richard took most of the heavy stuff and the most important stuff, the files, back down to our old office, and then uh, to our office, and then um, we moved everything into one. We were paying 100 bucks a month, 50 and 50, but now we only pay 50 dollars a month. So. Uh, we got that taken. We're cutting corners wherever we can. Uh, okay, the next thing on our agenda is federal recognition. You know, the federal recognition issue, we've, oh, God, we've heard it forever, haven't we? Forever. But out of this federal recognition uh, uh, report that I wanted to give to you guys today, I had uh, the opportunity to go back to D.C. at a last minute notice. Uh, Actually, Senator John Tester had put together, as actually he was campaigning for funds is what he was doing, you know. Uh, but anyway, our new attorney that are representing us, Heather Lock, uh, Locklear and uh, uh, what's that, uh, 
Henderson. Oh, yeah, Henderson. It's S S and N R. Denton law firm has came up with funding for my trip back there. So it was kind of short notice, but I went back there to meet with Senator John Tester so we could have a face to face concerning federal recognition. Uh, it actually turned out quite well. I was I was at, uh, I was very impressed uh, with SNR's uh, buildings. I mean, it was made out of marble. There must be about five levels of lawyers in that thing. They are the second and biggest uh, law firm in, in Washington, uh, uh, but it, it it was huge. Uh, they had everything pretty well set up. We went to uh, a, a restaurant on K Street. There was myself and three other or two other tribal chairmen that were invited to meet with Senator Tester, uh, and then of course there was staff and his media. So overall, in this one little room at this restaurant that was set aside on K Street, there was about 25 of us in this room, and uh, of course it was so easy, so easy to speak to Tester, uh, being that we're both from the High Line. You know, I used to be from Chinook and. Uh, we got to visit him, joking a little bit about what the cost of diesel is, and et cetera, et cetera. You know, and he knew family that I knew and dealt with uh, some relatives of mine and stuff like that. But it was it was a very uh, he was easy to speak to. And uh, so anyway, the, the meeting was uh, we had our lunch and then we were allowed to speak. Uh, I was given I was the second chairman to speak. The first chairman was from the uh, a tribe in Arizona. Uh, he spoke with his staff. And then I got to speak, and of course my spiel was uh, the first thing I gave out was telling him that bar is broke, it's worthless, I don't care for it, it's just a waste of funding and money. And uh, he actually agreed with me, and I told him I don't have uh, much respect for Mr. Lee Fleming, who runs bar, the branch of Acknowledge and Research. I said, we've been trying to get this federal recognition for 60 years. I said, here's your opportunity to move yourself and get all the Indian votes in the country. <laughs> if I can get, you know, get us federally recognized, we've been trying for 60 years. And uh, he, he was uh, receptive, is what I'm trying to say, you know. Uh, boy, he sure can eat, though. He cleaned that plate up before I even got started. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, it was very good that we got to, I, I sat next to uh, Senator Tester. And so, you know, he knows our goal. He said, I'm pushing, I am pushing for that, the bill for federal recognition for the little shelf. And then the latest thing that we had, I think I, most of you know it because I think we put it out on email, was that uh, we have uh, Senator Inouye has signed on uh, to our bill and it gave us some credibility and it gives us a strength. So with the tactic from what I'm understanding after, after the meeting, then there was one other chairman, he was from Seattle, Washington, they were a casino, they both owned casinos, so they were wealthy. You know, they, had, they had all their staff and all their people there. but. Uh, and he got to give his spiel, you know, and their, their spiel was on housing, uh, something about housing. But overall, uh, Heather Simpson uh, arranged that very well with her staff. It went very good. Then we had a photo session with Senator Tester. We got some nice pictures. So I, overall, I felt it was very successful. It was a very good uh, meeting with Senator Tester, and I was glad that those guys thought we'd have this private time, at least he's the new chairman and blah, 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 that we have this dispute is over with, you know, and that we can go forward. And then there was uh, the National Indian of Congress, is that what it's called, Gerald? National Congress of American Indians. National Congress of American Indians had a meeting there. It was 10,000 Indians in that town. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I went to that meeting over there, and uh, I didn't know too many. I did run into uh, a windy boy from Rocky Boy and some other things. Then I went to a meeting because uh, I heard uh, Bacchus was going to be at this uh, meeting that was kind of a, uh, a program to uh, thank people for what they've done, an awards program. And so uh, here, uh, first person I walked in and went over to see was John Echohawk. And uh, he was drinking a glass of wine. <laughs> so, and he said, well, John, we'll work with you guys now that, got this, uh, now that you've got this dispute out of your way and done with. He said, we're going to be behind you and support you. So that was good, at least, you know, so I went over and shook his hand. Uh, went over and seen Larry Echohawk. And Larry Echohawk seen my little shell chairman right away, and he says, John, I wish I could have helped you guys, I wish I could help you, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 
I said, Jesus, we needed help. We, we sure needed you to get in here and boost us on the state of recognition. Of course, his excuse is I had to dismiss, to dismiss himself because he's the brother of John Echohawk from NARF who was representing us um, through the, the administrative way through NARF, so it wouldn't be a conflict of interest. Then he told us he sh I should go see Dal Lavendor. And uh, Gerald and I, one time, we tried to run him down when we, he was here in Montana. Uh, he said, you need to go with him. Well, we've already understood that he had to dismiss himself uh, from our case, too, because his dad's a little shell member. So uh, his mother's a crow, his dad's a little shell member. It's, it's part of his bio, it says, his dad is a little shell, uh, a little shell descendancy. So, uh, and now, we just found out he's been promoted. Uh, he's, what, second in command? Top he's top dog now. So we, I tell Gerald or whatever, we still got to go see that guy somehow. Get him out here on a hunting trip and get him out, get him drunk or something, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So he's a top dog, but you know, I was discussing this at heart a little bit with Gerald and saying, you know, it just it breaks my heart to think we actually have a man that can snap his fingers and has a little shell of blood that could tend to recognize us. It, it, isn't that it, isn't that just amazing it, and frustrating to say here's a guy that can say you know I'll, I'll overturn your negative uh, findings you know and blah 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 and we can't approach him but uh, we're going to work on I'm going to figure out a strategy through Troy some other people and see if we can get him over there uh, if nothing else maybe I can get Jimmy Sankadard over there from Browning again to set that up for us you know. He has these ways of getting into that guy. It's incredible. <laughs> but I would say uh, things are looking pretty good. I'm understanding the strategy that our, our attorneys want to do with Senator John Tester, and, and uh, they want to attach this bill as a rider onto another bill, and they're hoping to put it on to uh, the new appropriations bill. And they already gave us the heads up. I do a lot of business with the U.S. government. We go under calendar year to do business. The government ends September 1st, uh, 30th, and their new money comes out November 1, I mean October 1. She said, don't expect them to have a budget. So that kind of gives me a heads up. It's going to be pretty slim pickets for a while, you know. Uh, but their intention is to try to find some way to attach it, hide it or attach it somewhere to the appropriations bill. Now, whether that happens or not, and uh, the last thing that I met with Heather Sibbins and uh, our Linda Locklear, they were going to get together, the two firms, and figure out how to put together the proper language to sneak it in there. So that's that was their strategy. Uh, go ahead, Daryl. John, if it doesn't go through on this bill, can they attach it again to a different one? I, I don't really, I guess I'm not going to say yes or no. I don't have that expertise. I don't know. I, I will ask on that, though. You know, that's a good question. Somewhere to keep it going around. But our, our, uh, I, I thought they told me if it didn't go through, you had to start over. So, so I think they told me that they have to start over. So uh, overall, I think it was a very productive trip. I was pleased to go there and uh, to meet with people firsthand. It was, it was nice. And I think this is the strongest our federal recognition, is, in my opinion, has ever looked. All we can do is just hope. Any questions to that? Okay. Uh, Next on the rundown, here's our cultural, and we got Richard. Uh, Richard, would you please uh, take over on that? Sure, thank you, John. Well, it's good to see everybody here today. Uh, so Mr. Martinez uh, is sitting there over in the shorts, so bring us here. Since our last <coughs> uh, quarterly meeting in January, we have done a few things. Uh, we, I mean, uh, other tribal members uh, assisting with, uh, as you know, any cultural activity doesn't have to happen without the help of all the tribal members and other volunteers that want to help out with these activities. So I say thank you in advance for, for that. Uh, we did submit a language grant, uh, but that was denied. So we're working on another uh, grant that's going to be going through uh, Endangered Language Fund. Uh, if we get things cleared up with the 501c3, uh, whether it be the, the tribe's own 501c3 or other uh, organizations that might want to assist with EIN, uh, we, we could apply for other grants that are coming up here very shortly. Uh, so I'm working with 
a few other people about trying to get a, a grant submitted in the near future. Uh, as far as cultural activities, to go along with Chairman Gilbert, what he said on recognition, I've always said, you guys all know me as, as saying this, uh, is uh, recognition does not come without uh, culture. So, so we like to work on cultural activities. So I set up a couple panel boards back there for you guys to look at. Uh, the one on the right uh, is a round dance, uh, Chippewa round dance and unity walk that we're going to be doing uh, the first weekend in May. So I got a bunch of flyers there for you to take a look at. A lot of you uh, have supported that in the past and have attended. I look forward to seeing you guys all come to that again. Uh, it's something that we're trying to build as a tribe and for the people here at Great Falls. It's going to be our fourth annual unity walk and round dance, and this year we're going to honor uh, Chief Little Shell, uh, especially with everything that's done on the past two or three years uh, with, with the fight that you know between the two councils. We're going to try to bring everybody together. And what I love about our tribe and what I love about our culture is it's unique because we have both our full-blooded culture and we have our Métis uh, mixed-blooded culture. It's, it's, it's very unique. Uh, so tonight at the BFW, we're having a, a jam session open mic and a jam session at the BFW. We also have some flyers uh, over there. Uh, we should have some noted uh, singers like uh, Ike, uh, Ike Hall and uh, Lee Hool and Curtis Bladelin and even my wife. Uh, I got to support her, otherwise I'd be in big trouble. Uh, she's going to sing. So, so I invite all of you guys, if you want to come to that, please come and, and uh, uh, join us uh, at that activity. So. Uh, I do support James, uh, and a, a lot of people are talking about uh, starting up a, like a powwow here in Great Falls. Uh, Great Falls doesn't have a powwow of its own. I'd like to see that happen in the future. If anybody has any ideas, uh, want to volunteer, want to help out, you know, I'd, that'd be great. Uh, <coughs> outside of that, uh, a lot of our members attend a lot of activities. Uh, there's an activity in Lewistown that we've all attended, but the powwow and the celebration down there. Uh, we did raise at another basket social about a month ago about $700 uh, for a youth uh, uh, rodeo that they're going to be doing this year. So, so that was a success. So, uh, pretty much that's all I got. James, do you got anything you want to add in the cultural uh, activities? All right, well, thanks, guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to look me up uh, after the meeting. What time are you starting tonight? Uh, 6 o'clock at the BFW. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman uh, Richard Pronto. Uh, on the west side or the 10th Avenue? Uh, that's going to be the one on the west side. Oh, okay. This is 10th Avenue South. Or, excuse me, 10th Avenue South, east side. <laughs> it's, it's this direction, right here. <laughs> that direction. <laughs> Anything else, uh, Richard? Uh, oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next uh, committee we have here is health, and we've got Elvina on that. Elvina, you want to give us any? Uh, well, I don't really have a whole lot. Um, I was going to tell everybody about. They're going to be having a. Uh, it's called the Common Mission. Um, it's uh, put on by the Behavioral Health and Diabetes and Health Promotion. It's a workshop. It's. It's free, but they don't have any travel money for anybody. It's, um, it wasn't in there, so. But it's for like VA suicide prevention program and motivational interviews and smoke signal communications. And so if anybody's interested, it's the 18th and 19th of April. We're gonna, and it's free, it's in Billings at the Holiday, Holiday Inn Grand. Is that the one you're going to? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yours get paid for. Um, anyway, and then um, MAWAC, which is Montana American Indian Women's Health Coalition, is having a meeting in Haver on the 2nd and 3rd of May. Um, it's for breast and cervical. And now, well, we were with the men and had the col col uh, colon and prostate, but it isn't anymore. She's breast and cervical cancer. And um, you can you can apply for a scholarship for this to pay your way. It's two nights. I mean one night. Overnight. <laughs> May 2nd and 3rd. 
Well, at the Haver Best Western Great Northern Inn. Yep. Yeah. Um, also, I want to tell everybody, I don't have the paper with me, but there is going to be a retreat for all breast cancer survivors, and it's paid for, and I believe it's in Oregon. It's like a fishing retreat. So anybody that wants to apply for that, I have the information at home. I don't have it with me. And it isn't until, I think it's June. I think it's going to be in June. I'm sorry I didn't bring it. But... Um, it's just breast cancer survivors, it's not other cancers? It, it says breast cancer. I don't know. And also, yes, at Fort Belknap, we're having a um, cancer survivor um, dinner at 3 o'clock on Friday at Fort Belknap at the Senior Citizens. So anybody that's a cancer survivor is welcome. We'll have a speaker, and we have a little group that's just out with in Fort Belknap that puts these on. So that's all I have. Thank you, Elvina. <coughs> Any questions? Who's going to be the speaker? You know, I don't know. They got a lady from um, Browning. It's, uh, do you remember that? The ones that always speak at the my at the main lab. Um, yeah. Breast. Okay. Need a new breast? I don't know for sure. I can't say, but I think it's her sister Lori. that volunteered. <coughs> Thank you, Obani. You're welcome. Uh, our, uh, that's our committee reports at this point in time. Uh, I do have one other one for, uh, that I had Ms. Kennerberg you're looking at. She's going to sit on a uh, position for the state of Montana for the school board. Uh, Representative Rachel, I sent that to her. And uh, she does has a, has a degree in education, so I couldn't see a better person to sit on that if she wants to. Uh, we just got that one in. we got to fill it in and appoint her to that position. Uh, Okay, I want to go back to something on, on old business. We're through our community reports. We'll jump into old business. And one thing we want to discuss here and bring up a little bit is the flathead land that we have over, over Flathead. We've got 57 acres of land over there. That's landlocked. The first issue we had to do was that we were past due on all the taxes. Again, I don't know how these guys spent so much money going over there on separate trips, $500 a whack or whatever it was, to check out this land and do this and that. And probably stayed at the Buck Snuck and all of that other good stuff, but never paid the taxes. So anyway, uh, we're three, uh, nearly three years past doing the taxes. We had to get some money over there. So we sent a check over for this year's taxes, and we'll try to pick up last year's taxes so we don't have that land in jeopardy. Uh, what we've uh, discussed on council, we, and it was a discussion, was getting rid of it. See if we can sell it. See if we can uh, generate some an income, use that money elsewhere, possibly a new office building or something else. We have no idea what the land is worth. We don't. We do know that there are people that will not let certain individuals uh, get access to it. Uh, and uh, so you know, uh, Richard had different thoughts on it. And there were other people may have the same idea. I don't know, but. At this point in time, I put out a letter to the Salish Kootenai tribe who showed the interest in uh, wanting to purchase that land. Uh, he brought it up at one of our meetings. I think he even, I think it was brought up right here when he gave us a talk one time, uh, James Steele. So we got 57 acres of land over there next to the river. And uh, I thought, well, if we were going to do anything, it would at least be nice to offer to another uh, Indian nation. And the Salish Kootenai welcomed that, and James Steele set, up, set it up. I've, uh, I've sent a letter of uh, interest or intent to see what it was worth. And since they've received that uh, letter from me, they have their entire process of what they go through uh, to uh, purchase land. 
and the Salo Scutney heirs, they are purchasing a lot of land. And they have, I'm sure their check is good. But uh, they're going to go in and what they do is get it appraised. It's no simple process. They'll go through the procedure and we'll find out what it's worth. Uh, you know, if it's worth selling or what it is or whatever. But we come to the conclusion by council decision that if the offer is, is a good one, we sell the property. So, you know, uh, this land belongs to the Little Shell uh, people, but we are the business uh, council uh, and we decided to do that. I don't really know. Uh, if we want to continue to pay out taxes, something that we don't even use, then that's landlocked. So I don't know. So uh, that's where it now stands. We've got a letter out to the same Kootenai tribe to go ahead and get it appraised and see what, what it's worth. Any questions on that? Go ahead. If it's worth enough money, the uh, first thing you'd look into is buying a permanent office for the tribe. I see. So buying yeah. a permanent office for the tribe. Yeah, we're trying to, well, we're, we hopefully it's a land or a permanent <coughs> office for the tribe, yes. Yeah, that's our intent. One of the things we discussed, land or a permanent office. Here in Great Falls. In Great Falls, yeah, in this location. I would like to commend the council for, for looking into this and the work you're doing on it. I We've had it for quite a while and I think it was kind of just given to us, tongue in cheek type thing. And uh, I agree with selling it. I, it's not doing us any good at this point. It's only cost us money since we've had it. Well, thank you, Daryl. That's kind of the way we feel. I mean, if I don't have any, I'm not even going to try to imagine what or where it's going to come out of. It's 50000 25000 100000 but I mean, if we had $50,000 in our checking account, we sure as hell could do a lot more right now, you know. Uh, we could uh, look into getting into maybe the possibility of buying a, a chunk of land on a payment basis or building on a payment basis, you know. So it would give us some wiggle room. And like I said, you know, we were all, we never had a, a real nice professional permanent office for the Woodshell people. We've always been on the move, you know. It would be nice to have a permanent little shell travel office. That, yep. bring, that brings up something else. As I was driving down the bypass yesterday, I noticed that the building next to the halftime sports bar had, I, I believe it was a, some type of government offices in there and maybe a, a college at one time. But it is released right now and uh, I just noticed the sign yesterday. It's a nice building and it has parking. It is a nice one, you know, and that's one of the things, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, I kind of chose to work with Jeff here and have our meetings here at the Moose Lodge. Is at Our current location as it now stands, there's just no parking space. There's no place to park. Uh, to start with, you know, it's all right for employees to go in there and do some work or volunteers to work, park, you know, three or four cars, but if we ever had a celebration or a big turnout and we needed to park 150 cars, we're even parking. You know? So, any other questions on that? You'll know more about it when we actually get something back from the city of the school. I don't know how fast they work or what they do with that. Uh, the next one that we're going to jump into is the 501c3 status, but I think before we do that, I'm going to re reverse one of these here. Uh, I, I want, uh, I'm going to put Gerald ahead of Mrs. Cannenberger here, and, and then you'll understand some of the situations that we're in here. Uh, this is not the time, to, uh, how should I say, I, I'm not backstabbing, nitpicking, or or uh, going into, uh, it's water under the bridge, but what's happened to us, huh? we're informing We're informing. what's happened to us is, it's caused us a one hell of a headache. It's, uh, yeah. it's, we've been working tirelessly to try to get all these damn little fires put out, these problems that we didn't know existed. And you know, it, it's time consuming, it's also frustrating. So uh, I, I want Mr. Gray to, uh, Maybe tell you a few of the things that we're battling here, trying to put out uh, these fires. So, 
since we've been in office, January, we've been working really hard with the state of Montana mostly on a lot of stuff that has been um, not paid by the past administration and its council. And, you know, just for example, you know, I mean, that's why our, you heard the financial part. We got $3,000. Um, the first thing that wasn't ever paid was the state unemployed employees tax, which cost us $6,900. That wasn't paid. The flathead land tax was $841. The building in Great Falls, we had to pay, uh, it was not insured. That thing would have burned down, we would have nothing. That was cost us $1,100. HRDC and Hammer, I don't even know if we paid that yet. No. That's passed due $840. Uh, the office building taxes, we had to use some ICE money. The state was gracious enough to come to us and say, you can use some of your ICE funds. That cost us $7,158 that wasn't paid. We lost the 501c3 that we've been trying to get back so we don't have to pay some of these taxes. Right now we're in the hole, well, we actually covered all this, but we're uh, about $16,810 that we could have all been using for something else here. And I, wanted, I just wanted, you know, John and I would discuss this, should we bring this up? We've been having a lot of people question things on Facebook and through emails. I thought they have the right to know why we're in such a big mess right now. You know, we don't have any money. And this is one of it. I mean, and it, you know, we can go on. We did not get our stimulus money, which was about four hundred thousand dollars that we're still trying to get back from the governor. We asked him if we could have it back. He said, "Have your attorney write my attorney a letter, and then it has to go in front of." the legislature to vote on, but we're still going to do that. It's a lot of money that he took from us. You know, I was supposed to be given to the little shell. Um, of course, we lost the tobacco money for the last, was it two or three years? Three, three, years. three, three years. years. Three years. Three years. Because there wasn't an efficient accounting practice put in place. That's why we have a new accountant on board, so that doesn't fall through the cracks. Um, I mean that was a lot of money too. You know, seventy to ninety thousand plus, you know, forty-two five for two urban areas each. That's for each year, gone. Um, and then we also didn't get the ice money for the last two years, which was uh, seventy thousand dollars each year. Again, because the state doesn't trust the little shell in our accounting practices. But again, we, we submitted a new accounting manual. They seem to be very, very happy with it. We're going to meet with them this coming week. Hopefully, Colin can come and um, go over it with them. And then, you know, they're they're they want us to be able to have access to this money. And I was at a, a Stead Commission meeting on Thursday and talking to the acting director of Indian Affairs, Lisa Evers. She was very adamant, you know. And they they've been trying to help us with this. You know, they didn't want us to lose the building. One, they had to save face because they gave it to us. So these, and there was a group of lawyers called Sunshine LLC here in Great Falls that are that were poised to take it over. By the end, end of this year, they would have had it. They were going to take it. And then the state stepped forward, and on uh, March 30th, paid that tax bill for us. But we lost, you know, some of that money that could be used for other economic development for the tribe. But so with that, I mean, we're not, you know, like John said, we're not trying to. It's just the facts. A lot of people are asking, when are we going to get newsletters? Well, we can't afford the newsletters. <laughs> this is why, you know, we just don't have the money to send, one, to print them, and then two, to mail them out to 4,000 members. I mean, it's just, we're just in that kind of a predicament right now until we start um, getting some of this money back from the state, which, uh, you know, rightfully ours. <laughs> so, any questions with that? Can I? Okay. Well, I, do, I just have a comment. You know, I'm, I'm sure if uh, most of the members nowadays have access to the web, whether they have it in their home or online or whatever, so rather than actually worrying about the expense of a newsletter being mailed in any way, shape, or form, they probably, we as a tribe should probably just go electronic period. The state of Montana has done it, where uh, I'm a counselor for developmentally disabled people. Mm -hmm. And we have a mail center, 
and most of our business for that mail center was through the state of Montana. And most of our clients have no work and have not had work for months because the state of Montana has gone completely electronic. Yeah. And it's, it's the way of the age, and as much as we hate it, something we have to get used to. Uh, uh, it's in our heritage to hate technology. Uh, it's probably best that we just go electronic. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I mean, you know, I don't know if we have that Facebook site. And, you know, now we have almost 300 members on there. And through that, through friends sending out emails, you know, I think that is starting to take a bigger hold than, you know, here, here's the newsletter, you know, we're going to print a bunch of these things and, you know, waste money. But, like you said, it is what it is, so move forward with it. Okay. I was just going to comment, too, that you certainly hit all of the big amounts of money, but there were a lot of small amounts of money that certainly added up, like um, some of the utility payments being in arrears and um, you know, some things like that, that um, we ended up having to take care of. And so, um, you know, that, that added to a, you know, a lot of it, too. So it wasn't just even the big chunks, but small chunks that added to a big chunk. So does the tribe have a viable revenue stream coming in at all, other than just state money, grant money, federal money? No. Or is there something that works for a viable revenue stream? Um, well, what did you say? yeah, but one thing we do have is the building. We have the, we rent the upstairs and the downstairs, about $1,100 minus utilities, so that ain't much. Mm -hmm. The other thing we'll touch on here in a little bit is we do, are looking at this year's ICE money, funding to be used for a visitor center um, out at Moroni and James will talk about that and that was we had to get that in right at the last minute if we were all going to be eligible for any of that money and it was a pretty significant grant because you had to have everything has got to be matched so that was a, you know, we had to get it in right away but other than that no we're our word grant you know heaven <laughs> Yeah, can you explain what ICE money is? Um, Indian Economic Indian Indian Country Indian Country Economic Development Fund. Our funding. And what it is, it's 